let's start with the with the intermarium as as a term. Uh, intermarius in between the seas is quite easy to figure out what are the uh, etymological uh, roots of of this term. Um, but then we can ask what what is the the, the seas we we talking about? Uh, the the seas in this case would be the Baltic Sea and the Black Sea. And please, if you uh, if you could uh, imagine the uh, land that uh, stretched between the, um, the the Baltic Northern Sea and uh, uh, and the southern uh, border on the uh, on the Black Sea, uh, that would be all of this part that uh, we could call the Middle Europe or uh, or the Central Eastern Europe or just the Central Europe. So this is the exact uh, uh, issue we're, we're trying to develop and uh, examine here at the conference, I believe. Um, before the, uh, in the, in the previous um, lectures, we, we've been talking about, where there was a really nice terms that I would like to, to bring up, uh, the, the different, uh, uh, the variety of, of options when we think about the uh, um, Central Europe. Uh, what does what the, uh, the, the actual meaning of it and uh, how the term developed through, through uh, years. And at our first uh, lecture, there was uh, something that uh, that was mentioned uh, the uh, subversive concept of uh, um, of uh, Eastern of uh, Central Europe, and I believe in this case what uh, what I'll be uh, talking about is a very subversive concept for an Eastern Europe, for Central Europe that is coming not even from from the times of uh, 19th century or this border, uh, um, uh, 18th 19th century, uh, but this uh, it's coming with the with the thoughts of um, Prince uh, Czartoryski. Uh, Polish uh, aristocrat who lived uh, at the uh, mm, uh, in the uh, exile in Paris, uh, he was punished uh, because he stood up to um, to a Russian power, and what he actually had on his mind when he uh, uh, formulate the uh, uh, the theory, the concept of united countries of intermarium. Um, he, he was simply uh, um, aiming to create a force that would balance uh, a, a power, political power in this part of Europe, and uh, well against uh, Russian, obviously. So I will quote one of his uh, um, one of his. Um, Thoughts, having extended her sway south and west and being by the nature of things unreachable from the east and north, Russia uh, becomes a source of constant threat to Europe. These words were written in uh, 1830. However, we know that he was uh, developing this thought about the intermarium, this coalition of the countries, um, even from, from before, in order to... Uh, gain um, an independence of, of Polish countries, but also uh, he believed that all of the smaller nations that, that lived in this part of Europe, um, the, the, only re the, the only way to gain an independence is to stood up to, to Russia and to uh, build a coalition, build an, al an alliance. And now we're jumping to, um, yeah, this is... Uh, as, uh, oh, well, one more in, uh, important thing. He was also recalling the Jagiellonian dynasty. And uh, right now, what I'm, what you can see over here is the time of uh, uh, 15th century, the late 15th century. Um, we're speaking about the uh, Jagiellonians, who uh, at the, at once they were, uh, of course, l ruling Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, uh, and they were uh, also the kings. Uh, that they had the seats of, of uh, the thrones of uh, Czech, uh, well, Bohemia Kingdom and uh, Kingdom of uh, Hungary. So uh, we might say that this uh, concept of intermarium have its roots already in 15th century, which in my opinion is extremely interesting because back then no one would ever uh, uh, say a word such a, a term such a uh, Central Europe. And now we're getting to um, another Pole who was uh, pursuing this, uh, this idea. Uh, I I, I I choose this this photo because I wanted uh, specifically to uh, focus on the moustache of uh, Józef Piłsudski, just to have like a juxtaposition with famous uh, uh, Tomasz Garik Masaryk moustache. I think it's a really nice field to uh, further uh, uh, research uh, about it. However, Piłsudski he he had this uh, fixed idea in his head, uh, which is back then called uh, the uh, Prometheism. Uh, that again, we're standing against the Soviet uh, uh, Union, we're standing against Russia that uh, through uh, um, the October Revolution become a, a, a Soviet, a Bolshevik threat to the whole Europe. 
Um, and to, to, to have enough of power to, to uh, be able to, to uh, get involved in, um, in battle for, uh, for a better future, means not communistic future in this case, uh, we would have to, again, reunite uh, and build a, some sort of barrier uh, that would be basic on the same idea, the idea of intermarium, the uh, Polish-Ukrainian uh, uh, alliance uh, um, and the rebirth, resurrection of uh, Polish-Lithuanian um, common wealth. Um, what is uh, also very interesting is that uh, recently, a uh, Polish president, at the beginning of uh, his recent presidency, um, he was talking about the uh, possibility of intermarium. Uh, just so you notice, the, the, the Polish president is the guy that is standing behind the hand of uh, Barack Obama. Um, this is maybe a better... Uh, I'm not very great fan of him, so... Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna, uh, yeah, full disclosure, why not? Uh, so Polish president had this, uh, uh, the idea of, of coming coming back to uh, to the idea of uh, intermarium. Of course, the uh, rightist, uh, uh, um, the populistic power who is now in charge uh, in Poland, uh, in, in um, uh, Hungary as well, uh, they are really keen on building some uh, um, alliance, some agreements uh, within Central Europe instead of uh, asking West for so-called permission to do it. So that's why we have uh, a Visegrad um, community. Uh, God bless Visegrad community. Without them, we wouldn't be here. Uh, but uh, w this is like semi-political, more of a cultural uh, alliance. Uh, the, the, the rightists who, who are uh, now gaining more and more uh, power in here, uh, in, in, in Central Europe, they are really keen on to building uh, more like a f political, uh, even a, a power front uh, that would be uh, uh, some some kind of a help for, for instance, for a recent, or not even that recent, but for war in, in Ukraine. Um, uh, what the, and I would like just to uh, short to 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 finish this uh, this brief uh, overview on the uh, uh, intermarium idea, mm, uh, bring a quotation um, of Edward Lucas. Uh, History suggests that Poland's greatest desires come when it overestimates its its uh, strength, and I think this is slightly like overestimating the, the, the fact that there isn't some kind of uh, opportunity uh, for Poland to become a leader of, of an alliance that would stood up to Russia. This is wishful thinking. This is make-believe. It doesn't have uh, uh, two legs to stand on. Um, but I would try to explain it maybe uh, uh, more in a, in a further part of the presentation. And right now I would like to uh, get to to, to the uh, very uh, vibrant question, why uh, would we pick up such an idea for an exhibition? Because that's the, the, the main uh, issue here. Uh, yeah, we can see the another uh, variation of, of an intermarium. Um, so the idea of an exhibition that would uh, combine this utopic vision of united Europe, united Central Europe, uh, with particularly uh, a particular artist uh, from uh, from the central part of Europe, and would 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 be uh, examining the, the this opportunity to find some some kind of uh, links, to find some opportunities for uh, alliance, and also to uh, to figure out what is the meaning of uh, art and how art can be engaged in political issues. Um, the idea is coming from from book we uh, we read me and the second uh, curator Łukasz Białkowski, and it's called Rzeczpospolita Zwycięska. Um, the uh, English translation would be the Victorious Republic. Uh, and it's one of these these books that that we know the alternative uh, um, history of um, in this case of, of Poland. I'm sorry that I'm keeping repeating the the word Poland here. Unfortunately, I'm uh, I had to in order to uh, uh, present the the subject uh, well. But uh, uh, trust me, it's uh, it's used very often ironically. Just so you know. Uh, so in Rzeczpospolita Zwycięska uh, Ziemowit Szczerek, what a beautiful name, uh, he is um, bringing up uh, the alternative story. What if we won the war in uh, 1939 instead of 1945? So we can skip all of the war trauma uh, and we can also uh, um, f 
uh, we, we can also forget about all the guilt we have and, and all the reasons uh, uh, of our failure, which is, of course, the, the war, the damage that it, it caused, the communism, all these things, there's a list, a long list of, of things that Poles would like to treat as, uh, um, as an answers on, uh, on question why we're not as su successful as we should be. Um, so uh, uh, the, the, in the book we can read about the, the new country, the new alliance that is uh, um, coming into life in, in 1940 already. Uh, the part of Germany, uh, obviously the, the, the Slavic uh, uh, part of Germany, uh, would become uh, dependent on, on Poland. And I'm talking about all this part of uh, Eastern uh, uh, land that uh, used to be Slavic. We know it from like 10th century, 9, 11th century. Back then, there were Slavs living there. Of course, uh, the the uh, right now there were uh, no reason to uh, uh, to combine it uh, with uh, with Poland. In in uh, in fact, uh, Szczerek would provide such a uh, such a vision that Poland is eating part of of Germany uh, as a, some kind of. Um, um, how to say the uh, as a some as a some kind of uh, re oh I'm missing the word the uh, yeah the afterward outcomes so there's another option the uh, uh, of a combination of a countries as we can see there is a Bulgaria Ro Romania involved al also Austria so there were there were uh, various uh, um, various options, how we would create, how we would shape the actual uh, intermarium. And it's as fluid as the idea of Central uh, Europe. So we can't really base on any fixed uh, borders, uh, well, especially knowing that uh, still we, we have some, uh, um, some border conflicts uh, which um, might be uh, ongoing in case of Crimea and, and, and Ukraine, uh, for instance. Um, what uh, the the bullet the bullet point in this case uh, the the the, um, the his point uh, the Sherek's point is that um, even even if we could make it even if we could uh, build this alliance uh, ten years after it the whole alliance would tear into into pieces there wouldn't be any of uh, intermarium, it would become another failure. And the reason of this failure is so-called general impossibility. The general impossibility, uh, I will use the, the Polish translation of it, it's uh, generalna niemożność, it's a term coming from uh, Witold Gombrowicz uh, uh, book, when he was combining the reason why uh, the great uh, uh, Central European culture, the, the, the culture that we're so proud of, our heritage, cannot be understand or well promoted abroad, uh, uh, at least in, in the West, he's using this term, the general impossibility. So let's blame something, or uh, let's uh, put it on the blame on, of, of many, instead of uh, trying to figure out what is not working, why we're not the, uh, this empire, uh, uh, this Western uh, uh, country, this Western democratic uh, structure as we wish to. This is a, an important thing, I, uh, I believe. And another uh, term I would like to use in here to understand better uh, the uh, failure of, of intermarium and failure of any kind of um, combination, any kind of juxtaposition between uh, Central uh, Europe and, and West, which is very ongoing, uh, I would say, uh, um, uh, ongoing argument. The um, um, the lack, lack that is brought by uh, Jan Sova in his in his uh, um, in his book, the uh, uh, Phantom Body of uh, of the King, um, and mm, the lack would be the lack of uh, he's trying to very like specifically um, highlight the. Uh, uh, the reason why we're not West, what is the moment when the Europe divide between West and East, and of course he's not getting back to uh, Tehran or to Yauta. He, he wants to find the roots of uh, um, differences that are coming with the, uh, of course, with the uh, um, economic. 
Uh, and in, in the economy, uh, he's uh, uh, making this really long uh, period of research uh, um, and proving his point that the differences uh, started to appear already in uh, 15th century, and these differences were coming with the fact that the, uh, actually that the Latin uh, law, the, the law system that was coming from the uh, uh, Roman Empire uh, was really well applied in France, in Germany, of course, the countries that even if we look at the map of, of Roman Empire, they were somehow dependent from uh, uh, from Rome. However, in, in Poland, in uh, uh, King of uh, Bohemia back then, um, in this part of uh, land in Central Europe, uh, they were not as well applied. That's why the uh, the king didn't have enough power. The uh, um, aristocrats were gaining more and more and more power, uh, and they were trying to. Um, they were not allowing cities to develop as much as they could possibly, and the cities were not developed, and so on and so forth. The economical situation at the uh, from 15th century until 18th century uh, brought really like a wall of differences, the, 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 um, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, uh, backwards issues were, were in here in, in Central Europe. Meanwhile, the, the West was going for, for better, was going for a better uh, future. Um, so these are the two terms that uh, uh, we were using also to, to um, build the, uh, to create the concept of an exhibition. Um, why, wh and when we had this one, we, we wanted to uh, create a map uh, of terms for, for an artist. So this is an example. Um, unfortunately, it's not really easy to uh, see what it's, uh, what it's over here. I will maybe tell you a few words about each, each one of the term. Inside we have, of course, the uh, possible um, intermarium territory. Uh, with, um, with these border lines, which are the most important, so Black Sea and Baltic Sea. And then we have the history as uh, some kind of uh, package of terms, uh, the politics, the visual culture, and the psychoanalysis. Uh, psychoanalysis would be all the myths, uh, all uh, the wannabe histories uh, that we're, uh, we're so crazy about, all the uh, ideas that we could be better, that we could have uh, um, some, some kind of union uh, that would go beyond the nation and uh, would become some, uh, some kind of a bigger, a better country we could live in. Uh, so this is the psychoanalysis, this is the whole methodology. Uh, Politics is uh, what is happening nowadays. So immigrant crisis, the uh, the fact that uh, European Union, the union is not as um, as strong as it used to be. Um, the new uh, uh, populistic power uh, in Poland and in, in Hungary. Uh, so we wanted to give it to an artist as a, some kind of. Um, starting point to, to work on. Uh, another one was the history. So all the common ground we have in, in history, all the common issues, all the history that we're, uh, um, we're sharing in this case, and the visual culture. So what if we would build, what if the, the intermarium uh, could be possible? What would be the uh, visual identity of, uh, of an intermarium? And with this map, we started to work with an artist and we developed the um, Exhibition. There are some uh, some photos from the exhibition space. It uh, took part in uh, in Futura. This is quite interesting piece because uh, so what I wanted to um, uh, mention that uh, when we think about the uh, opportunity of a new state, we have to um, realize that there were already this kind of alliance in this part of Europe. There was of course the uh, Austro-Hungarian. Um, uh, uh, monarchy, the, the Habsburg monarchy, um, would create the idea of Mittel um, Europe and the Soviet Union, the unwanted coalition of a uh, Soviet Union that we are like all uh, sharing. And uh, we were aware of, of these uh, two subjects when we were working on the exhibition. And also the uh, mm, we brought up uh, context of uh, new art history uh, and um, texts uh, uh, provided by, for instance, uh, uh, Piotr Piotrowski, uh, mm, the, the 
Polish theoretician, art historian, um, who wanted to kind of um, create a new art history that would be horizontal, that wouldn't be divided between West and, and East, um, that uh, would treat the facts from uh, from Central Europe uh, on the same level as uh, uh, as in case of, of, of Western Europe. And um, um, it's... Uh, Important in, in case of uh, Irvin work because Irvin, the, the uh, group from uh, from Slovenia, um, they they were one of the first who were so aware of of the identity of a region, and they um, they work on the publication um, uh, uh, art uh, uh, from East, which is remapping the this. Uh, this region and, and trying to uh, make a point that, that there is no difference between art from well there there are obvious differences between art from east and so-called west uh, but we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't uh, keep such a thick line of division between them because it doesn't make sense it will just always there would, there would always be this uh, um, this division this this pointless uh, border between these two uh, there are a few more photos from the exhibition uh, the uh, piece Yechasna uh, Novestat it wasn't only shown in the gallery it was also uh, a big billboard uh, post in, in Prague 4 um, placed uh, nearby the uh, um, entering the, the, the way entering uh, city of Prague um, also um, a video by uh, Rafani another group we, we kind of wanted to work in this exhibition with group of uh, groups of artists we we were thinking that if we're talking about if we're dealing with the idea of uh, united countries uh, in a ma ma big scale we should uh, uh, figure out the, the way how it works in the micro scale how would it be working um, between people who are creating a, a group of artists so this is uh, Rafani and the teaser for the uh, broadcast movie um, I will just shortly mentioned about these pieces because I uh, if we would focus on them that would take too long another examples of um, time for new state uh, posters uh, um, by by Irvin uh, which already it, it's a ongoing project that was already shown in uh, London in Lagos in, in Leipzig uh, in Moscow um, so it's uh, it was another chapter the the, the invitation they, they got from us it was just to provide another chapter of this project, um, and then again we um, we wanted to commission one piece that would be somehow uh, building an idea of uh, of uh, visual language, uh, trying to provide some uh, visual forms for a new state. Uh, this is this mural by Pavla Malinova, and uh, she was, uh, yeah, as you might see, there are few. Uh, symbols, few objects, few shapes that uh, you can recall either from, yeah, like the solar system swastika or uh, David's star, uh, or some motifs from uh, Slavic uh, uh, methodology. Mm. The um, we also involved the um, as uh, well, kind of against the idea in, of intermarium. Uh, we wanted to involve uh, Russian group uh, Stodjelat. Uh, which very often deals with this subject, with the subject of uh, uh, dominant power, uh, of the um, guerrilla fights, of uh, 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 partisan approach uh, in, in a war between the, the, the bigger and the, the smaller, these uh, uh, two enemies interaction. Um, there was also a movie by um, Grupa Azorro, which, uh, which was kind of recalling the old uh, uh, Austro-Hungarian uh, empire. Uh, all the artists uh, from, from this uh, group from Krakow, they were traveling by car uh, to the old capital of, uh, of an empire, to Vienna, and the language they were speaking uh, for the whole time, for the whole uh, movie, it's Latin. So they're like making this uh, nostalgic uh, journey to the old capital and, and using some the the uh, the old uh, uh, lingua franca, uh, the Latin language, which uh, of course provoked a lot of funny situations when they are speaking Latin with uh, ordering a beer in Latin or, or speaking on the gas station in in, in Latin. Mm. The uh, uh, Zen by Stodjelat and uh, two uh, cycles, uh, two pieces. Uh, by Svatopluk Mikita, who uh, dealt in this particular case with 
um, with um, the Soviet Union and kind of nostalgia we have after after the um, Soviet Union. And another very nostalgic piece is uh, the uh, Neon by Little Warsaw, a Hungarian group. Um, what we enjoyed, uh, why we enjoyed it so much was that they um, they create some kind of shape that could be easily um, um, withdrawal with with an idea as it could become uh, a channel for for some uh, ideology uh, however it's just an open form uh, it's just uh, it shows what I was mentioning before the uh, art as an opportunity uh, for tube to uh, provide some ideological or uh, um, political uh, ideas um, so another few things that I uh, I would assume are quite important in this case is the uh, this urge to go for um, retro futuro ideas that uh, uh, we're getting back to past to find some ideas which uh, could could be a sign of a better future could be a um, a fixed ideas uh, uh, for a better um, future. And this is very much uh, connected with uh, the landscape uh, of Central Europe uh, after uh, communism, after 1989, after revolution, as Czechs would say, after transformation, as Polish would say. I think this, the, 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 the fact that we're using different names for, um, for uh, a year 1989 is, is already uh, uh, very significant and, and it has uh, um, it's, it can be interpreted in uh, various ways. Uh, so m when we were discussing this with the uh, with the second curator, whether we should do this show or not, what are the uh, why would we do it, and and so on and so forth, um, we come up with uh, with the term established by uh, Jürgen um, Habermas, uh, catching up revolution. Uh, so what happened in, in this part of uh, uh, of Europe instead of um, bringing a new revolution, it, it brought uh, a status quo from, from West. So after uh, year 1989, we decided to forget about communist past, and we wanted, we were so urged to uh, get on the same level as capitalistic countries. So there was no futuristic uh, plans whatsoever to build a better future. There was just a, uh, just a, a pattern uh, that we knew from from the West, the pattern that we were supposed to catch up with, um, and also the another term because um, taken from in this case uh, uh, Boris Groys, the uh, Russian theoretician, is the pre-communism. So after the communism, what what we wanted to achieve uh, was the situation that happened before the communists. We, we wanted to get back to the countries uh, before that. We wanted to take all the trauma uh, out of our heads. Uh, we wanted to clean up ourselves from, from the Soviet ideas that were fake, that were uh, uh, um, pretty much a fraud. Uh, and we wanted to get back to pre-communist uh, uh, state, which means the time from before the war. Uh, what we forget about, however, is that uh, back then the Europe was extremely divided and was extremely uh, nationalistic. So uh, what is happening right now, I would say, that we, we think about the 90s, about the time uh, after the, the communists when the economy was growing, but uh, the, the things were, uh, were hard for, well, I can't really remember that so well, but uh, I, I believe uh, either in an economy uh, or in any political matters, the, the, the things weren't going so, so smoothly back then. The, mm, uh, what is significant for the 90s is the mm, the new nationalism that are, are uh, happening, that are coming back. Uh, and I think that uh, the the economy bust, the, the 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 fact that there was a huge grow, um, and we were yeah, what I uh, what uh, Habermas was saying, we were catching up. Right now we are in the moment when we already catch up with the uh, uh, with the West, at least in terms of the uh, uh, economical level. Um, and uh, the nationalistic concepts are coming back. That's why 
uh, President Duda is, is coming up, up with the intermarium uh, idea as a remedium, as, a, uh, um, as a some kind of uh, medicine uh, that could provide us a better future uh, without uh, our, our dangerous neighbor, uh, Russia. Um, that is why uh, we can observe uh, this uh, anti-immigrant uh, uh, movements in, in some parts of, of Central Europe. Uh, and also the, that's, the, mm, that's uh, the reason the countries uh, are so keen on reuniting and st stood up to European Union, so creating some kind of mm, um, uh, some kind of independent uh, alliance. Um, I think I'm, I'm getting back I'm getting to, to the end of the presentation. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say is that, yeah, the obvious reason we, we went for it, we decided to make an exhibition, is that we thought it would have some resemblance, that it, it, it takes about uh, issues which are quite, um, quite uh, vibrant nowadays, that it's not only about this futuristic concept, but the futuristic concept when, uh, when we have uh, right wing in charge, uh, when we have uh, mm, the war at the outskirts of Europe, uh, it's becoming uh, quite interesting mirror that we can use uh, to, uh, to observe uh, 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 how, how we look actually. And uh, the, the, the reason we decided to pick up this uh, big narratives instead of uh, follow various small narratives which, are, which is more uh, uh, mm, common for contemporary uh, curating is that uh, we believe that uh, mm, this is actually the only way to deal with the big narratives, to uh, deconstruct them, uh, to use them, and uh, to, to talk about them uh, 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 with the uh, chicken tongue, and it's uh, um, mm, in a way to to try to uh, figure out the subversive uh, way of denying the big narratives. Thank you very much for your attention.